Hi, welcome to this week's math video. Today we're going to be learning about SOL 4.14. It says the student will collect, organize, display, and interpret data from a variety of graphs. So in fourth grade, what they want you to focus on are bar graphs and line graphs. So bar graphs are used when you're comparing different categories and line graphs are used to show numerical change over time. So we're going to take a little look at both types today. Now, you all helped me out when I was needing to collect my data. My first question that I asked is, what is your favorite summer activity? There's a variety of ways that you can collect data. You can make observations, you can take measurements, you can take surveys, do experiments, do a poll or a questionnaire around your neighborhood. So for me, I decided to do a survey to collect some data from you. So if you turned in your survey last week, your data is included in my graphs. Okay, so the question was about your favorite summer activity. So the options were swimming, surfing, rollerblading, watching TV, and riding a bike. And you can see here's the data. These are the number of students who chose these activities. So you can get some information by looking at this table and you can take a look at it and analyze it. But what's really nice is when you make it into a bar graph, you can visually see it a little bit better. So when making a bar graph, what's really important is that you have a title so that anybody who glances at your bar graph, they're going to know exactly what this bar graph is about because they can quickly look at the title and know, oh, this is about their favorite summer activity. And then you also need titles along the edge, the vertical axis, and then the horizontal axis. So I put the categories down here, the summer activities, and you can see I have this swimming, watching TV, riding a bike, surfing, and rollerblading. And then the number of votes will determine the, the height of the bar. So there's, these are very important features to be able to include in a graph is the titles um, along the horizontal axis and along the vertical axis, and then a title for the graph together. So one thing that you need to decide when making a bar graph is the numbers. How do you put the numbers along the side? So if you notice, the most votes that we got was 40. But if I didn't really think about that and I was just, oh, let's just go ahead and slap some numbers over to the side. Let's just do, oh, let's say from 0 to 100. And if I were to go ahead and put some nice lines across the edges so I can see really clearly where my bars are going to go and I put my bars on there, remember swimming was 40, you can, you can see this, right? You can see these bars, oh, but it, it's there's really something that we need to change. And I'm going to have you noticed this part right here? This big open empty space. That's what you kind of want to avoid when you're making a graph because it's not um, a meaningful use of this space. So what's better is if your numbers along the edge are a little bit thoughtful in comparison to the actual data that you received. So since 40 is my largest number, I don't need to display all of these um, bigger numbers. So let's take a look of what, how much better this graph gets if 40 is my highest number. 
Wow. See what a difference that makes. Now you can really see the difference between swimming and all the other ones. And then I like to add one extra little touch when I make graphs. See these little, they call them tick marks over here to the side. I actually like to use a ruler and go ahead and draw those out. Not everybody does, but I do because it just kind of helps me when I'm all the way over here, um, I can follow this line along and see very clearly um, how many people voted for rollerblading. Another thing you need to think about is, or at least notice when you're analyzing a graph, but then definitely think about when you're creating a graph, is notice the, the difference, the intervals. So I can see that this started at zero and the first major line is five. And then there are five spaces in between. So this actually just goes up one at a time. That's not always the case. Sometimes it goes up five at a time or two at a time so or even ten at a time. So you just need to make sure that you notice what the intervals are. So when I'm looking at surfing, I can follow this line across and even though there's not a number right there, I know that since it's one, two, it's a second line up, that that's two people voted for surfing. Okay, so that's another th important feature to keep your eye on. Another nice option is to do something like this. For each category, you can make a bar a different color. It's very visually pleasing to the eye, but it also kind of helps your brain separate the categories. So that's one option. That's definitely not required because some bar graphs are just black and white. But if you were going to make a bar graph, this adds a nice extra touch because it helps, you know, the whole point of having a graph is to visually help someone see the, um, your data quickly and be able to make sense of it. So once you have a graph created, what you want to be able to do is answer questions and make observations while you're looking at that graph. So let's go ahead and look at our first graph and answer these questions. So what is the least favorite summer activity? Well, we know that this has the most votes, so we know that these have the least votes, but you can see when you look real carefully that they're on the same line that rollerblading and surfing both got two votes. So we would say the least summer, the least favorite summer activity, there's a tie, surfing and rollerblading. Here's another type of question where they ask specifically about the number of votes. Which activity received 14 votes? So I can come over here to my, my numbers on the um, vertical axis and find 14 and then follow it over and then I can see that this bar is 14 votes and it's watching TV. Okay, here's another question. How many more people chose watching TV than riding a bike? All right, so I would take, remember those words, how many more when you're comparing two things when you say how many more of this than that that's when you're going to be subtracting so you would take the number of votes for watching TV we know is 14 and riding a bike is well that would be 8 so how many more people watch chose watching TV than riding a bike that would be six people. 14 minus eight would be six. All right, so my second question that I asked you guys in this survey was what is your favorite snack? 
And again, there's lots of different ways for you to get data when you're making a graph. And for this one, I chose a survey. And my options were ice cream, chips, candy, popcorn, and carrots. And these were the number of students who chose this snack. 33 chose ice cream, 8 chose chips, 9 chose candy, 6 chose popcorn, and 10 chose carrots. Okay, so now I made this into a bar graph, but I switched it up a little bit. I just want to show you that this is another option. You can make your bar graph sideways, and all you're doing is changing the information on the vertical axis with the information on the horizontal axis. So down here are the votes, and here are the categories. Remember, a bar graph shows different categories. Okay, so you can see there is definitely a favorite here. <laughs> Very good. And the others were pretty close in, in their votes. Okay, question number one says, what is the favorite snack? <laughs> well, I think that's pretty obvious. The one with the tallest or the longest bar is ice cream. How many more students picked ice cream than chips? Okay, here's another one where you're going to have to do a little math. How many more of something than something else? You're comparing two things, you're going to subtract. Okay, so how many more students picked ice cream? Let's see, 30, 31, 32, 33, than chips. Okay, here's chips, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that would be 33 minus eight. And that would be 25. So 25 more students picked ice cream than chips. And then the last question says, which snack received six votes? So I'd come down here to my numbers, five, six, and follow that line up. Well, there we go, popcorn. Popcorn received six votes. All right, and then I wanted just to show you real quickly that you could also just flip this around and do the same thing as before, the same type of bar graph where the categories are on the bottom and the votes are along the side you could do it the same way and that's perfectly fine. So it's pretty nice that you could decide and um, go either sideways or vertical. Pretty good. All right, so let's look at some line graphs together next. So in order to make a graph, obviously you need some data. So this one is a little bit different. This one, I took some measurements and by measuring, what I did was gave two tests to two students, four tests to two students, so Fred and Jill. So they took four different tests in January. Fred scored 80 and Jill scored 75. In February, Fred scored 85 and Jill scored 70. March, Fred scored 65 and Jill scored 95. And then in April, they both scored 100. So when you are looking at numerical values and trying to see their change over time, that's when you want to use a line graph. And then it gives you some really neat data when you're looking at it on the line graph. you can make some really neat observations. So here I have a little legend that the blue line is going to be Fred's math score. The red line is Jill's math score. Here's my title of the horizontal axis, the math tests for January, February, March, and April. 
And then along the vertical axis, these are the points that were scored on each of those tests. And the title of the whole graph is just Math Test Scores. Okay, so you can see here in January, you can see that Fred scored higher than Jill. We moved into February. Fred also scored higher than Jill. But you can also see that, wow, Jill's score went down. And Fred's score went up. So that's kind of nice. So you plot these dots on the line and then you connect them with this line to see a pattern. Now in March, look at Jill's score. Whoa! Look how much it went up. That was wonderful. But then Fred must have had a bad day when he took that test because his score went way down. You know how that happens. Sometimes you come to school and you have a test and maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe you didn't get a, a good night's sleep that night before, so you just don't perform as well. So that must have been what happened here to Fred. But this was the first time that Jill passed him in, his, in the scores. She scored a lot higher than him. And then we moved into April, and Fred must have been feeling much better because he scored much higher. And they both scored the same exact score for April. So they are both using the same dot. All right. Very interesting to look at it this way. So let's try to ask some, answer some questions. In which month did Fred and Jill earn the same score? Yeah, they both earned the same score in April because their line goes to the same dot. In which month did Fred score lower than Jill on a test? Well, we noticed that, didn't we? We noticed that right here in March. And then in which month did Jill score a 70 on the test? Okay, so Jill's line is red, so let's find 70. So look here at our intervals. Here is zero, and the first number is 20. So can you tell me what the intervals are? How are they going up? Is it by ones, twos, fives, tens? What's the interval? Okay, so what you do is look and see how many spaces are in between the numbers. So we, here we have a 0, here we have a 20. So we would look 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's 5 spaces in between these two numbers. And the numbers go from 0 to 20. So if I were to divide 20 by 5, I would get 4. So every line is 4 points. So it would be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And then look at this. 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. So they are increasing by four points. Okay, that's important when we're trying to find number 70 here. Okay, so it says in which month did Jill score a 70 on the test? So we're going to look here at 60, 64, 68, this would be 72. So 70 would be halfway in between. So let's follow that along. And looky here. <laughs> in February, she scored a 70 on the test. Okay, so knowing the intervals is a really important part of reading any type of graph. 
All right, and then the next bit of data that I collected was I measured my son running a 400 meter race. So he ran it seven times or six times, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then I kept track of how fast he ran. This might be a little fun thing for you guys to do. You could set a timer and run a certain distance and then keep track and make your own line graph with your data. Okay, so for this one, I took measurements. All right, and so what I did was along the bottom, well, you can see here my main title is Aaron's 400 meter race times. And then down here at the bottom, the red dot is his time for that particular day. Here's the dates. And then along the vertical axis, I made the time in seconds. And if you can see, I have my intervals start at zero, and the first number is 10. So let's see what each line is worth. Um, there's one space, two, three, four, five. So 10 divided by five would be two. So every line is two seconds. Okay, so it's really good to analyze a graph really carefully like this before you even attempt to answer questions. Just really look at, see what they're showing you. So you can see here on Monday, he ran and it was 60, 62, 64. And since it's not on the line, it's in the space, it would be 65 seconds. Now, the next line plot was right here on Tuesday, he ran 60 seconds. So then what you do is you just connect the dots. And then as you connect the dots, you can start to see a pattern. Okay, so let's answer some questions about this line graph. On which day did Aaron run the 400 meter the fastest? Now, right away, you might be looking up here. Are you looking at this one? Because normally on the other ones that I showed you on the bar graphs and things like that, the higher it was, the better, right? That meant the more it was. And then um, even for the line graph with the test scores, if it was up high, that meant they scored a, a high score and that was the good thing, right? Well, in a race, <laughs> you want a smaller number because you want to do it faster. So this is actually not the fastest. So it would be the lowest dot would be the fastest. And that just happens to be this one right here. That's the lowest dot of all of them. And that was 60 seconds. And that took place on Thursday. Okay. So really think about what your data is showing you and what those numbers mean so you can answer the questions correctly. Now, can you predict which day Aaron tripped while running? What do you think? If you trip, you have to take some time to get back up, dust yourself off, and start back up again. So that means you're going to take a little bit longer, which on this, it's going to be up higher. Did you guys think this one? Yeah, because this was, it took him the longest to run a 400 meter race. This is the day that he tripped on Friday. All right, the last question says, in how many seconds did Aaron run the 400 meter on Tuesday? Okay, let's look for Tuesday. Let's go up to the dot, then straight across, 
with 70 seconds. Awesome. Okay, so now you're going to get an opportunity to show what you know. Here's a bar graph. This bar graph below shows the number of pencils sold at a school in one week. Answer the following questions using this graph. So take some time. Read the title. Read the title of the vertical axis. Read the title of the horizontal axis, the categories. Try to figure out what the interval is and the numbers. Take some time to look at it before answering the first question. Okay, and here is a line graph now. This line graph shows the morning temperature in a city for each of four days. So answer the following questions using this graph. So take some time before you answer questions. Look at the titles. Look at the titles of the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Look all the categories. Try to see what the um, the interval is. This just means that there's a, a larger gap here, but the rest you can see a pattern. Okay, so do your best with these questions. Okay, so what do you think about graphs? Was this difficult? Was this easy? Well, you know, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. So even if it was challenging, you can just relax and just know that you just might need some practice. Look at this. I love this. If running is difficult, what do you think you should do? Run more. Because if you keep running, it's going to get easier and easier. And this applies to anything. If, if memorizing your math facts is hard, practice that more. If learning about graphs and answering questions about graphs is hard, practice it more because then you'll just get stronger and stronger. All right, friends, thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you later.